It's like I finally had the moment where I was able to say like, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to walk away. I've been dating this guy for, it, we're coming up on three months. Um, and like on paper, like everyone says on paper, he checks all of the, checks all the boxes. And the one box he didn't check was being chivalrous. This guy would not open doors for me. Um, this guy did not walk me to my car and I had had conversations about it and like he was just still like reluctant, but he would be like, I hear you. But he also would just be reluctant to change this like what I what's a really small behavior. Um, and like when I sat and I thought more about it, I realized like obviously it's not about opening the doors. It's about being thought of cared for and considered and it was just it's now glaringly obvious that i'm i disagree i disagree i think you can be thought of cared for and considered without being chivalrous you can do other things you know for example let's say you were in a relationship and he cooked for you and you know he paid the bills and etc etc he just wasn't chivalrous he just wasn't opening doors for you he wasn't giving you extra crazy treatment you want to be treated like a woman. That's what you want. You want to be treated like a woman. But he treats you like an equal. Ooh. Ooh. You don't like that. None of those things. I spent the night. We were up all night. We went and got breakfast. I only got four hours of sleep. I call him. I tell him, hey, like, I'm only 15 minutes away from home, but, um, I'm falling asleep. Like, can you just stay on the phone with me? And he's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, no, I'm not going to stay on the phone with you. Like, bye. Like, I'm like, wait, no, I said, I'm, I'm falling asleep at the wheel. He's like, well, if you're falling asleep, you shouldn't be driving. And I'm like, okay, I'm only 15 minutes away. If we could just stay on the phone and talk to me, like I'd be good. And he, he's just like, I'm going to go. And he hangs up. Okay. He just doesn't like you. <laughs> okay. The morning before, like, there was another sign and we had gotten to an argument about it and I, like, started crying because I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to... You're crying after three months you're, of talking to someone. You're already in arguments and crying after three months. I realized, like, oh my god, I like this man so much. It's hard to find people you really connect with, you really enjoy spending time with that make you laugh, that you think highly of. It's just hard. It is so, dating is so hard. Dating, dating is so hard. Dating is so hard. So you, you want to, you want to see the best in people and you, you want to give people chances. And it's like, if something is an issue for you, it's an issue. Um, it doesn't matter if that person doesn't see it as a big deal. Like, if that's a problem for you, th that's a problem for the both of you. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, I just wish people a lot because it's like, it's really hard. Um, it's hard to start over. It's hard getting to know people. It's hard sharing and being vulnerable with people and then for it to not work out. So like, I just want to acknowledge how hard it is and like just wishing people luck and to always use good judgment and to like really put yourself first look i won't lie to you okay dating is getting harder and harder for women because women want to be treated like ladies they want that preferential treatment they want a chivalrous man but that's not the world that we live in anymore feminism killed chivalry but not only do they want that man to be chivalrous they want that man to hold the stereotypical masculine traits but they also want that man to be liberal they want that man to agree with their feminist ideology so yeah look i'm not talking to this woman specifically because i don't know her i don't know her situation but the men that you see and the men that you don't like just remember they have been created by women there was a time where every man was chivalrous there were a time where most men were providers not only because they had the means but it was the mindset that's now dead this guy, you fall in love and he is rich AF.
but his ex-wife got $80 million in the divorce settlement. So before you guys get married, he says, you know what? Sign this prenup, which entitles you to $1.5 million if we ever get divorced. So three kids and 18 years later, you file for divorce and you realize you're only going to get $1.5 million. And according to the prenup, if you try to fight it, you forfeit all of the money. Then you realize child support. This man has to pay child support. Obviously, he's rich, right? So you request $248,000 a month in child support. But the court says, uh-uh, you're only going to get $129,000 a month. When you file for divorce, you have to move out of the family home. But you will get a stipend so that you can rent a home. So you rent a house across the street from the house you guys lived in, and it's $50,000 a month. And yeah, you know what? It's near the beach, but it does not have direct beach access. Your soon-to-be ex-husband takes your kids on vacation to your family home in Aspen. So you know what? You decide you're going to go to Hawaii a couple times. Why not? You're going to go with a family friend who recently just got divorced as well. And he's going to loan you $20,000. You're going to give half of this to your mother. Why? Because your ex-husband used to give her $5,000 a month. But when you filed for divorce, he stopped paying her. I'm only getting $129,000 a month. How could I give her any money? You start to realize I need more. So you go back to court and you say, I want $161,000 a month because this man is rich, rich. You start explaining, yes, I am renting a lavish home, but my kids are used to an experience. I need to create an experience. When I was married to this man, we used to have parties for our kids and we would set up 40 tents and have taco trucks and have huge parties. How am I going to do this now? You're thinking to yourself, you know what? I know my ex-husband is going to have my kids like half the time, but when they are with me, they deserve to have an experience. My ex-husband's lawyers find out that some of the child support money is going to plastic surgery, but I need upkeep, right? I need upkeep to find a new man. Do you see how ridiculous this sounds? I am all for men paying their equal share, paying child support. But to me, this Kevin Costner and his soon-to-be ex-wife situation is out of control. Because ultimately, are the kids suffering truly? If you don't have direct beach access, are your children really suffering? When they grow up and they learn about this situation, how are they going to feel? I'm sorry. I just feel like this is selfishness and it's out of control. Sorry, I really do. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if you don't agree. Tell me if you agree. But it's so gross to me, right? People are struggling and you're literally getting upset because you can't fly in snow or something like that for a children's party. Ugh. I'm sorry as well, because look, I have no sympathy for men like this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Women only do what men allow them to do. This man already lost 80 million in his first divorce. 80 million settlement. But he goes and get married again. You know why? The public image probably, right? These famous people, they're weird. Now you're in a situation where you're getting divorced and she wants 250K? Huh? If men went out here simping and bending to the will of these women, situations like this wouldn't happen. You've already been finessed. Why are you getting married again? Look, maybe he's super religious, right? I doubt it, but maybe he is. Maybe he has to get married before he does anything before. Fine, if that's the case, what can I say? The only logical explanation that I can see for this man wanting to get married again after losing 80 million is that she wanted to get married. And then he put it in the prenup that she'd only get 1.5. And if she challenged it, he thought he was smart. I just read in one of these articles that she's now saying she signed the prenup under duress. Who would have thunk it? I genuinely don't know where to start with this video. Do I start with the before or do I start with the after? The before or the after? I think I'm gonna start with the before. So this is before Cam Newton's wife met him. Stop doing this pick me's are women who try to do everything right just so a man can choose me. Yeah, cut that shit out. Cause I'm gonna keep it real with you. Men already know what they want in a woman and who they want. But if you're so nurturing and you're an asset, and it's not you, they'll never tell you to stop doing what you're doing because it's beneficial. And I don't want to hear none of that shit like, oh, I'm just a nice person. I'm genuinely like that. Well, bitch, you're going to genuinely get played. No, it's just that I'm just naturally like that. Like the shit I do for him is natural. 
and your natural ass is going to get played. If you are making a man's life easier, i.e. cooking, cleaning, providing pussy whenever he wants, and he's giving you the minimum, he's never going to do more. And he's never going to tell you to stop because it's beneficial to him. No history in the niggadom ever has a man been like, oh, stop doing all this stuff. It's, stop making my life easier. I, I, I don't look at you like that. Hell no, they gonna kick their motherfucking feet up and enjoy these perks without doing no- Now this is after she met Cam Newton. But in the art of submission for me, because I can't speak for everybody, is being joyful about it. You know, it that want of, and I think it, not even just a want, the power of knowing that you, you have the power to make someone's day better. And that's a choice and easier. Yes, better and easier. That's a choice that you have to make. I always make the choice to do it. I always make the choice to do it. I, I like to give, I like to allow my person to lead. They know, especially like when it translates in the bedroom, I like to feel dominated. You know what I mean? Like I want a man to be a man. Now there's times where I might like, you know. Besties, what's up? Listen, I gotta say this. A lot of people gonna get mad at me, but I'm just gonna say it. And I wanna speak to a particular group of women where it's like, the question is, why do you feel so entitled to the money of the man that you have having sex with? Why do you feel entitled to his money? No, real question. This is not a judgment question. This is just a real question. Like, why do you feel entitled to his money? Because you're having sex with him? Girl, I just seen him blow $30,000 at the casino. He can buy me that $18,000 watch. It's just $18,000. I seen him blow it. You know what he was doing? You know what that was called? Doing what he want to do with his own money? That's what? Because this is the thing. I used to think just like that. Before I started making my own money and I was like kicking it with niggas for lunch dates and little bullshit like that, knowing that I was broke as hell. When I started making my own money, my whole life changed. I remember one time I got so mad at this guy because he spent $5,000 at the blackjack table in 10 seconds. I'm like telling my friend like, oh, well, he should have asked me if I had food in my fridge before he spent all that money. He didn't even ask me if I was straight. Bitch, you knew you ain't had no food in your fridge before you went out. And why is it his job? Because he fucking you? Girl gone, you's grown. And I know y'all gonna talk shit about my relationship. Oh, well, you, you with a nigga with money. And, and yep, and he with a bitch with money too, bitch, period. And when you make your own money, you realize that the relationships that you have, a lot of them are out of survival. So when you have your own, you, you're you with people because you really want to be. Anything my nigga do for me is icing on the cake because I take care of myself. The real flex is being with someone because you want to be, not because you need them to survive. So I don't know about you guys, but I watch a lot of Animal Planet, okay? I watch a lot of Insect Wars as well. But Animal Planet, that's my shit. But there's this weird dynamic because I don't like the fact that these animals have a natural instinct to kill. I find it, I just don't like it. But I still watch it out of intrigue. Bring it to human beings, we also have natural instincts. We also have a biological makeup. And for a lot of women, women like money wealth status fame they cannot help it a lot of these women you see talking on the internet they don't really have any morals really like let's keep it real if they found a guy who was rich and attractive most of them would drop all the nonsense that they're saying and become this woman now maybe they wouldn't do it for a guy who's just attractive or who's just rich but if they can find a combination of both all the morals they have everything they stood on they would put it in the bin what I'm getting ready to explain to y'all is very important, especially for my younger women in their early 20s. And this is coming from somebody that's finna turn 24. But I learned this lesson a long time ago. I really learned that if this is something that you can fully, truthfully understand and just get a grip on this concept, then you won't be one of these women out here that are in their later 30s, in their later 40s, and you still just going crazy behind a man. Keep yourself busy always have moving targets of success always have strict goals that you want to achieve and be so strict and so stuck to those goals that no matter what type of man comes to your life or whatever type of situation or relationship that you get in that you're not going to stray away from them goals i don't care how much you like somebody the main thing should never not be the main thing. And the main thing is always yourself, your goals, what you're focused on, what you want to accomplish. You have to understand that the man comes second to that. Until that becomes your lifelong partner and y'all become engaged and y'all become married, 
you are still first. You still got to keep yourself up. You still got to keep yourself going. If you go to the gym, keep going to the gym. Don't get lazy just because you laid up with that man. If you like to go out and treat yourself to things and take yourself out on solo dates and whatever the case may be, still do that. Okay, just because a man come into the picture, don't be a fucking idiot and just lose all the recipes and just just forget everything that you already do for yourself no you need to still stick to the things that you do for yourself and then when you're dealing with a man that should just only add to and enhance the quality of your life you get what i'm saying if you understand this while you're in your early 20s then i'm proposing that you will be able to have a very healthy dating life and you'll still be able to go through your life and achieve the things that you want to achieve all while maintaining a certain level of happiness that's what this is all about in the first place if there's any demographic out there that i value the least in terms of dating advice it would be young modern women okay 24 year old she has no idea what she's talking about she said nothing about dating. Look, the last part, she said, um, you know, if you go to the gym and stuff, keep it up, fine. Fantastic, of course, keep it up. But throughout this whole thing, she said nothing about dating, nothing about relationships. She just said, be an independent queen, basically. And I keep saying this, these women are more like us men than women back in the day. She sounds like a man. Focus on yourself, king. Make sure you get your money up, king. Dude, tell me I'm lying. It's always something, but this one I love to see. Girl posted this online and said, I love when broke men like this get reminded that they don't run shit. He tried to give her an order in her car in front of other people at that, and she did just right. Let me show y'all this video. Hold on. You should put your lights in. That's it. Period. Thank you. Like, who are you talking to? She contemplating, like, is this nigga's room? This her car. And he. Okay. Right. How you heading from outside the club? You can't even get in. No, for his case, how you heading outside the car? And you can't even get in. She's driving on. She's driving on. Oh. That's exactly what you get. Humble thyself. Hawk man. <laughs> There's so many things in this video, okay? The big levels of masculinity that he tries to portray in public, trying to embarrass his girlfriend. It's not even his car. One of the things that my mom drilled into me from a young age, when I was 11, 12, make sure you have your own things. Because if a woman gets tired of you, she will kick you out. And then what? And then you have to go stay in hotels and stuff. And look, maybe it's just me. And I have this same mindset with children. I've always been able to get my point across without shouting angrily. So there should be no situation where I'm in public with my girlfriend and I'm screaming at her to get in the car. And it's not even his car, so he has to go in the passenger seat, looking crazy. And then she drives off and he starts punching the window. Fake masculinity, okay? That right there is a feminine man. That right, that, that right there is a feminine man. He is dangerous. He is dangerous. <laughs> Now I'm blowing up your phone